daughters and you pour out your Holy Spirit into our hearts. That's us, Lord. We're already in the door. Your word says that all those who, who believe on you, we've already passed from death and life. We are already seated with you in heavenly places. That our citizenship is in heaven. So, Lord, we're coming in that place. Blood-bought, redeemed, righteous, sanctified. We thank you, Lord. You're unto us all of these things, and we say thank you. Oh. Amen and amen. <laughs> what a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord, huh? Absolutely. Yes. You know in the Old Covenant when they used to meet, I mean not in the Old Covenant, but in the New Covenant when they used to meet, when Paul was taking this message of the gospel out to the, out to the, out to the world, when the disciples were taking this message out, that when the Bible talks that he's like writing to the church of Philippi, the church of Colossae, he's writing to these different churches, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians. Hey, when he's writing to these different churches, when he's talking about he's writing to the church, he's not talking about like today we think a church, a building. That's not what he's talking about. When he's writing to these churches, huh? he's, he's talking to body of believers. The church is the body of believers. That's the church. So he's writing these letters. He's not reading to, writing to any specific church building. It's not a church like that. The church in the, in the New Testament is the body of believers. So he's writing to the church body in Ephesus. The church body, the, the believers in, in Colossae. That's why he says in some places, he says writing, he's writing to the saints in Ephesus. To the saints. He's writing just to the body of believers. Yeah. It's not actually to ch actual church building, actual church denomination. It's just the believers that are trusting in Jesus Christ for salvation. Yeah. 
And the pastor, like when he's writing to Corinthians, he's not just writing to Corinth, he's writing to Achaia, which is the whole, it's like California. Yeah. He's writing to the state of California. It's a, there's a state of, uh, of Greece called Achaia, and Corinthians was in Achaia and in that area, and that was a major city yeah. in that area, but that's me. it didn't mean Corinthians only, he meant the whole area of Achaia. So, so he's saying, a, it's important to understand that because sometimes we don't see what we don't we read the Bible we don't understand what's really going on here, you know, with the, the atmosphere that they were living. Hey, you guys, thanks for coming. Good to see. You. I haven't seen you in a while. Okay, we got a good one today. Okay, we're gonna get into we're gonna try and get into Romans chapter six. Okay, because we have been looking through that, that scripture that that says that uh, Roman uh, what was it uh, Hebrews ten twenty six that says that if we willfully sin. That there's no more sacrifice, nothing to hope for but judgment. You know, and that's a scary verse for many people because they don't understand that that willful sin is not just talking about, you know, any time you, you sin. You know, it, it, it's, it's not talking about any sin except for accidental sin. You know, no, Jesus died for all sin, period, across the board. The Bible says he was manifested to take our sins away, period. Okay, so that willful sin, what he's talking about, and I, I, if you want to go back over the past few videos, past three videos I've been talking about this, you know, it's the sin of unbelief. It's rejecting Jesus. It's written to Hebrews, so it's people that are still, true. what they're doing is, what they're, they're doing is exactly what it says they're doing. He says if you, if, you, if you reject the truth, there's no more sacrifice for sin. So they're rejecting the truth that Jesus said, nobody comes to the Father except by me, right? Yeah. He said that. Nobody comes to Father except by me. So if you reject that truth, guess what? There's no more sacrifice. He's it. You only need to come through his. If you want to go back to animal sacrifices, well, then you're willfully rejecting the truth. And there's no more sacrifice for you. There's nothing to hope for but judgment. It's the willful sin of rejecting the sacrifice, Jesus, and choosing to go back. Under the, the, it's written in Hebrew, so they're still doing animal sacrifices. And so if they're rejecting Jesus, they're choosing to go back under the old. And those don't work anymore. Okay, that's ended. Jesus ended the law for righteousness, Didn't right? The animal sacrifice until Rome. Yeah. So crushed Israel, crushed the Jews, crushed all that in Jerusalem, and they actually stomped on the, the the temple, and literally gold was in the thing, and they dug it all up to get the gold. Well, that's how bad it was. To help you see what I'm saying, to help you see what I'm saying, watch this. Okay, um, Carlos, you go to Ephesians two ten. Betsy, you go to Philippians 2.13. Okay? Um, you go to uh, uh, Philippians 1.6. Dylan, you go to Romans 8.28. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know. Ron. 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 That's okay. I, my kid. I didn't say Dylan uh, either. I, I just said you. You didn't say Dylan. Did I? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So I did that. I did oh, that come on. Kids. I looked at my kids. I tell them they're all the wrong names. They stand there. Oh. Like, okay, you come here. <laughs> I said, Ron, we got to rewind this. Oh, what? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did I give one to you guys? You can give one to. Uh... To okay, okay, I'll give you one. Okay, you go to Romans four five, but we're gonna go to you last. Okay. Okay. okay who's got Ephesians two ten? I do. Okay, Dylan. I mean, Dylan, Dylan. Carlos, hit me with it. Okay. Okay. Well, now here's the thing. Do we work for this? Or do we not work for this? Do we earn our relationship with God? Or do we have to? Do we have to do something to keep to, to sustain to work to earn it or in any way sustain it? What do we do? This is important. We got to decide, okay? Because the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Okay, so we, is it a faith walk or is it a works walk? Okay, people think that I'm saying we don't do any work, but we're going to talk about we're going to look at that too. Okay, so is it a faith walk or is it a, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to decide off the bat is how am I accepted by God? How am I forgiven by God? How am I loved by God? How am I blessed by God? It is not of works. It is not of works, period. Your works don't take, add nothing to it and your works don't take nothing from it. But there is a work for us to do. We do live holy. We do live godly. So I'm not saying we don't work. But I'm saying it has nothing to do with your relationship with God and how he receives you, how he accepts you, how he loves you, how he blesses you. Nothing. Nothing. But you'll find yourself blessed by God as you start to see. People think like this. They think, well, you know, this is the flesh talking. They say, well, if I see it, I'll believe it. All right, seeing is believing. Okay, that's the flesh. Spirit that are walking in the spirit, being led by the spirit, is like, if I believe it, I'll see it. Mm -hmm. Right? It's opposite. Right? This is flesh talking. Oh, if I see it, I'll believe it. 
Spirit talking is I believe it, then I'll see it. Mm. See, and that's, that's how it works. That's how it works. If you can believe this stuff, well, you start to see it manifest in your life. You will see it, right? If you can believe this stuff. A lot of people don't. They think you still do have to earn this. You still have to work for it. Oh, what if you willfully sin? Then you're not going to get it. Dude, see, that's my point. You, you're, you, that, that kind of thinking ruins everything. It ruins the whole open door relationship that we have with God, independent of our performance. It ruins it, right? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> So this, this is why I'm heavy on this, right? You see why I'm heavy on this? Because it's huge. This is a huge hump we need to get over, right? So that we can enjoy God and live in gratitude or response to all that he's already done. You know, and, and, express, and here's a thought. Actually, expect a lot more. Independent of me. It's because he's good, not because I am. Whoo! He says, I hear that. Independent of me? I didn't get that. What do you mean? Independent of my performance. Oh, I'm the, okay. okay independent of my performance. Talking. God is good, independent of my goodness. Oh, okay, you're talking about right? just you. Yeah. Me. Okay. I mean, God is good. He, I mean, he's just good. Okay, I, I independent of my goodness. And he's good to me, independent of my goodness. Yeah. And he can do that because Jesus suffered for me. He paid my debt that I owed for sin. He paid it fully. So, dude, what do I? What should I be expecting from God? Oh, I would hope a lot, you know, because He's given it freely. Isn't that good? Okay. So, what did I say? Okay, who's got Ephesians two ten? Let's go. We're talking about works. Ephesians two ten. Huh? What did I say? Oh, you're Ephesians two ten. What are you? You're Philippians 2.13? Yes. Okay. And you... I'm Ephesians 2.10. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Carlos. It is that of us can... Oh, hold on. Oh, it is God. Of... It is God himself who makes us what we are and given us new life from Christ. And long ages ago, he planned that we should spend these lives in helping others. That's Ephesians 2.10? Yeah, it's in the Living Bible. It's worded different. Yeah, it's the Living Bible. Okay, let me look at mine. Let me see what mine says. Okay, Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are... God, we know we're talking about works. Oh, yeah. We're talking about works. Because people think you still have to work for this. You still have to earn this somehow by something that I do. you got to earn this relationship or at least some, somehow sustain it. By so, okay, we're not saved by works, but we have to continue to do good works to sustain it. That's what people think. Okay? Right. What it is is we are saved by works... The Bible says the same way you receive him, the same way you walk in him. So we receive it by faith, we continue in faith. The Bible says, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me, and the life I now live, I live by faith. Okay, so it is a faith walk. So if we receive it by faith, we continue by faith, trusting that this is going to sustain me. If it could save me, it can sustain. The same grace that saved me is the same grace that can sustain me. We grow from faith to faith, not faith oh. to works to faith again. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, so this is, what, this is what mine says in Ephesians 2.10. I, I gave everybody a verse to go to, but you can just go to these if you want to as we go through. Okay, okay Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'm not just in Christ. He literally created me there. I am a new creature in that place. Right? It says we're a new creature. All things are new. What does that mean? Well, I'm literally created in Christ. And elsewhere it says we're created righteous and truly holy. We're created righteous and truly holy. He create your new creature, and he creates you that way. That's pretty good. So let's just live out our new life. I have a new life. I've been born again righteous. Right? I was born a sinner. Right? Aren't we all born sinners? Don't we all need salvation? Don't we all need a savior to be saved? Amen. Yeah. Amen. yeah. Okay, so if I was born a sinner, and the only way I'm going to get out of that mess is to be born again righteous. Right, right, right. Righteous and truly holy, truly. That's my being. That's my new creature created in Christ. That's what that means. Oh, my gosh. Um, for good works. Here's good works. Okay, see, now, it, now what it, it talks about good works. Now, dead works would be me trying to earn this, trying to work for it, something that I do. That would be a dead work. And he says, no, you are God's workmanship created in Christ unto good works. Good works come from what we already are created in Christ, mm -hmm. already God's workmanship, already working in me to will and to do his good pleasure. 
already there, done deal. Now unto good works. See, good works come from, they come from who you are, come from what he's already done. Isn't that great? Yeah, God calls us from... Otherwise, it's a dead work. If I think I've got to do it to sustain it, do it to earn it, it's dead works. We don't think like that. Okay? God's called us to repentance from dead works in Hebrews 6. Oh my gosh, you know what repentance is? A change of mind. Yes. That leads to a change of action. That's repentance. People think repentance is, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. No, repentance is a change of mind that will lead to a change of action. That's repentance. True repentance is changing my mind about God, so I will so I'll change my actions toward him. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. If I think God is a big angry meanie, my actions are going to be dead works. Yeah. Because I'm trying to earn something. Yeah. But if I understand that he already loved me, God so loved the whole world that he sent his son to save me, if I would just believe on him, I won't perish. Now, if, I, if, I, if I'm working from that, it's a good work. I'm already not going to perish. I'm already have eternal life. I believe on Jesus Christ. I've already passed from death into life. I'm never going to come under judgment. Now I'm working from there. That's what he calls working out your own salvation, not working for it. Big difference. So yeah. any, if you think you've got to earn this, work for it. Somehow deserve it. It says he justifies the ungodly. You don't deserve this. Right. And he says it goes for, it's for those who work not. So you don't work for this. Yeah. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So let's lose that. We're not losing people mix the two. They think, well, you still do that. Yeah, it's this and that. It's mixture. No, it, the, only way, the only reason they think that is because they see that we, there should be some works in our life. Like James said, you say you have faith with no wor wor works. I'll show you my faith by my works. Well, all James, John, James is not yes. contradicting yes. Paul. People yes. think they contradict. Right. But all Paul is saying, Paul is dealing with upward, your relationship with God. Okay. James is talking about outward, your relationship with others. Okay? If you say you have faith, but no, you know, dude, if God is working in you to will and to do what pleases him, well, there should be some actions pleasing him. Right. Exactly. You should see you in church. You should see you reading your Bible. You should see something in you, right, that shows me that you're a Christian. That's all James is saying. He's just saying, yeah, there is works, but they're good works. They're not dead works. James is dealing with dead works. Yeah. I mean, Paul is dealing with dead works. James is dealing with good works. Yeah. Something that comes from the relationship. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah, it's a single work. Is that when, when Rahab off, uh, offered refuge for the spies, it wasn't a lifetime of good works. It was a... One, it was an act of letting, you know, it was one, it was one act of faith. And that's when, when Abraham hoisted, he used an example of Abraham hoisting Isaac to the, on the altar. It was a one-time work. And when we help in Christ, let Christ into our life, that's a one-time, it's, it's an initial work, you know. And that's what saves us, you know. See, we got to understand, okay, cause listen, I teach a lot about the new covenant. And I say how we're not under the old. But we don't just throw the Old Testament away. One, one thing is it's good to read the Old Testament and see the laws and see what they were under and how God was harsh with them and he would punish them and he threatened curses and a lot of stuff going on there. Thank God for Jesus that we're not doing that no more. That we're not under the law anymore. Thank you for Jesus. So it's good to see that what they were under, what the way God used to deal with his people, okay, as opposed to how he's dealing with us today. So that's a good thing. That makes you really appreciate Jesus that much more if you know what, what, way, what way they lived. Right. And, and number two, number two is if you understand Jesus and what the J blood did for us, mm -hmm. you can start to look at the Old Testament. And you see Jesus all over the place. Mm -hmm. You see Jesus. Jesus is the Red Sea parting. Right. Yes. Where they came across against the Red Sea and, and they're between a rock and a hard place. Red Sea here and the, the, he, the Egyptian 500 chariots coming down on them. And now they're in this, you know, Red Sea here. They can't go anywhere. They, this, this, this chariots, they're coming after them now. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they let them go. And so they're in a rock and there's no way out. They're, they're done. They're fried. There's no way to be saved. Who, oh, oh no. And then what does he do? He parts the Red Sea. And that symbolizes the way out for us. When we're stuck in a rock and a hard place, there's no way to be saved, okay, except for Jesus, except for God parted the Red Sea. No, Red Sea represents the blood of Jesus. Red mm -hmm. Sea, red blood, represents Jesus. The Bible talks about his body broken for us. Oh, yeah. His blood shed for us. That's symbolic of Jesus, and so that they can cross the sea on dry land and go to the promised land. Go to the, and what is the promised land for us? Heaven, right? We can go to heaven through the blood of Jesus shed for us. That's symbolic of Jesus, mm. right? And, and Noah with the boat, when they got in the boat with, 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 with Noah, right? Mm. That's symbolic of us getting on board with Jesus. He's the only way out of the flood. Only way to be saved boat, is through cross. Jesus, 
right? The flood yeah. represents the wrath of God being poured out on all humanity. Well, it's the same thing today. The wrath of God is being poured out on all humanity, only that you don't have to go, you don't have to suffer the wrath of God. You can be saved through Jesus. Get on board with him and you don't have to fear the wrath of God. You'll be secure inside Christ. Amen. That's what the boat symbolizes. Amen. Amen. The boat symbolizes the cross, the wooden cross, wooden boat. No, uh, Noah being, leading his family into the boat represents the family of God being saved through Jesus Christ, right? Oh my gosh, and he's all through there. He's everywhere in the Old Covenant. You see Jesus when you understand the truth about him. Mm. When you understand the true Jesus, you start to see him everywhere. He's all over the Bible. Amen. You know? Yeah. Uh, David, when he fought Goliath, and he won. That's Jesus standing up against the devil and winning the battle for us. Right? Didn't David fight Goliath and win the battle for the army? Well, that's Jesus fighting the devil and winning the battle for, for the us. Church. For the church. Isn't that great? Yeah. For the believers. Mm. Right? Oh my gosh, it's all through the Bible. Good, when Samson good. took on a thousand men, impossible situation, just like David going against Goliath, impossible situation. Well, Samson going against a thousand men, impossible situation, but he won. He defeated a thousand men with nothing in his hand but a jawbone, and they had spears and swords and shields, and he blew up their butt. That's a picture of Jesus, <laughs> what he did for us. Impossible situation. How could that save us? How could that work? It does. It seems impossible on the outskirts if you're just on the outside looking in. But, dude, when you step in and just say, I'm just going to trust it, it yeah. must be true, it works. Mm -hmm. It yeah. really works. It is our deliverance. Isn't that great? Yeah. Amen. I love this stuff. This is the kind of stuff I start thinking about on my hikes. I'm like, this is good. i got to share this in the class. Amen. Yes, Which you is, so you don't need to, yeah. <laughs> so you don't need to just throw away your Old Testament. There's a lot of stuff in there that points you to Jesus. Man, woo! The blood, the animal sacrifices. Gee, I wonder what that symbolizes. Jesus, yeah. His blood shed for us. Their sins were covered by the animal blood. Gee, we got the blood of Jesus now. Huh? That that must be better than that. Well, the Bible says it is. It says those could only cover. This one removes. The sin issue is dealt with. Blood of Jesus. Huh? That's another one. See that? That's yeah. Jesus too. He was in there in the fire with them. Who's that? Jesus. It says there was a fourth person in the fire with them. Yep. Gee, I wonder who that was. He even says it looks like a son of the gods. Right? He's right. right? He, right. Said he looks like a son of God. You know, he said that. Gee, what does that tell me? It must have been Jesus. Right? He was in the fire with them when they were thrown in the fire. The only and they, thing they burned was the ropes yeah. around them. And they said, well, God can save us. He will. But even if he doesn't, we need to have that attitude. We need to have that attitude. When you have a problem, when you have some difficulty, some illness, some, str some, some, yes. some struggle, you're being evicted. You wrecked your car. You lo lost your job. You know, you get, you're sick. You got a problem. You got a pain. Whatever it is, you got to say, my God can save me. He will heal me. But even if he doesn't, I'm not bowing down to discouragement. Yeah. Right? Depression. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to bow down to depression and discouragement. I'm not going to go there. My God can. He will. But even if he doesn't, I'm not tripping. We've got to have that attitude. That's the attitude of a true Christian. Because we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't see to believe. We believe to see. Yeah. Right? We don't have... That's Job, right? Oh! See? That's so good. God allowed for stuff to happen in his life. God allows for stuff to happen in your life. To, to solidify your faith. All right. We, we remember said, what he told uh, what he told Peter. He said, "Satan has asked for you that he might sift you as wheat, yeah. but I prayed for you that your faith fail not." Okay. See, so it's a faith factor. Yep. It's a faith. Yep. Everything wants to steal your faith. Don't give it up for nothing. I'm trusting in Jesus for my salvation. Period. The, the power is blood enough. I'm not going to treat his blood like it's a common thing. Right, like right, he right. says in Hebrews chapter uh, Hebrews 27. I'm not going to do that. People try to get you to do that by thinking that that's some willful sin. If you willfully sin, you're going to go to hell. You're nothing to hope for but judgment. That takes away the power of the blood. That's for somebody who's saying that they... Right? Right, right, right. Yeah. I don't treat it like a common thing. I know the power of the blood and I'm saved by it. For all sin. Period. Amen. Who? Amen. Yeah. So Hebrews 26 isn't saying, well, you know, if you willfully sin, any time you willfully sin, you choose to sin when you know you shouldn't. Any time you do that, well, you're just throwing, treating that blood like it's a common thing. No, I'm not treating the blood like a common thing. It's powerful enough to save me from every sin, past, present, and future. That's what I'm trusting in. So that message is that, that willful sin isn't me. It isn't my willful sin. It's, it's rejecting Jesus. 
Huh? And staying in sin, right? Because you're either in Christ or you're in sin. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. If you're in Christ, you're not in sin. We read that. Remember what he said? He said if you he said if Jesus had it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that if Jesus has not risen from the dead, you would still be in your sins. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we believe that he did. We confess him as Lord and we believe he rose from the dead. Therefore, you're not in your sins. You're saved. Amen. That's what you're saved from. The sin blockage. The very nature. The problem is that we have a nature of sin, a yes. sin nature. That's the problem. But God removes that when He imputes His Holy Spirit. You are no longer sin nature. You're the, your temple. The body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're a new creature. You're born again, righteous. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Are you feeling me? Mm -hmm. This is. We're not hearing enough of this. We need to hear this over and over and over again. This needs to saturate our brain because the Bible is saturating the Bible. Look. Okay. So what, we only looked at one of these. We got to look at these. Okay. So Philippians two thirteen. Who has that? Verse 4. Okay, yeah, go ahead. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Five, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ by grace, ye are saved. Six, he has raised us up together and made us sit together in every place in Christ Jesus. Seven, that in the ages to come might show the exceeding riches Excuse. of his grace and his kindness towards us in Jesus to Christ Jesus. Eight, for by grace ye are saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Nine, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ten, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to works, which God has before our day that we should walk mm. in. That's wow. funny you go there. Because that's saying exactly what I've been saying for the past 10 minutes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just put it in a hand can to paraphrase to help you understand what, what, what is here. So you just read that. And, and, hey, and you, <laughs> <laughs> you did this Bible study, 12, 12, 2021. Wow. You had the study. Yeah. <laughs> See? He's keeping up. Yeah, I know, huh? He's a good one. He is. He's <laughs> been be, him and Betsy have been pretty faithful for the past four or five years, right? They've mm -hmm. been here since the yeah. beginning pretty almost, right? Yep. yep. We were downstairs. Yeah, and you know? Yeah. And, and must, you must be getting a lot out of this, I, I guess, right? It's good, huh? I mean, come on, because we talk about the right stuff. We talk about the right stuff in here. You know? You know, it's like a take a gas for the week. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, beautiful. How beautiful that is. It, it is. Right? Yeah. It, it is. <laughs> okay, so what did I say? Philippians 2.13. What? Two? For, oh, oh, oh. Who's, who's, who's assigned that? Did oh, we, Bessie. Philippians 2.13? Yeah, Bessie gets that. Bessie. Yeah. Betsy, Betsy, go Betsy. ahead. Okay, see where the work is going to come from? Right before this, he says, we work out our own salvation. We don't work for it. He says, we work it out. Yes. And he says, for it is him working in. Okay, yes. so we're working it out of us, what he's already doing in us. Okay. Already doing in us. Mm -hmm. All right? And we work that out of us it is to will and to do. That means the desire to do it and the power to do it. That's what he means to will and to do. It means not only the, the power to do it, but even the want to, even the desire to do it. That's him working in you. See, so that's a good work, right? Would you, that, that's a good work. If I'm just working out what's working in me, that would be a good work. A dead work would be trying to work for it. Working out what he's working in would be considered a good work, right? Mm -hmm. So trying to work towards sustaining it, you know, or obtaining it, dead work. Okay. Thank you. All right. Look at one six. We looked at these last week, but I want you to see this again. Go go to uh, go to Philippians one six. These go together. Where he says you're working. Go ahead. It says, and I am sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to com completion at the day of Jesus Christ. This is one of the biggest scriptures people use for eternal security. Because right there is a promise. We, we just read that he's working in you. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And, and, and here he says once he starts that work, he's going to see it through. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? That, that's one of the biggest eternal security scriptures you can look at. There's many others. One says that he will not, his gifts and his calling are not revocable. Yeah. That means he's going to take back what he gave you. If he gives you his righteousness, he's, you're not unrighteous every time you sin. I'm not taking that back. You're still righteous yeah. before me. Which right? Yeah. Oh that's a gift. The gift of the Holy, the Holy Spirit is a gift. The Bible says, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much will you give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? He equates the Holy Spirit with a gift, right? 
And he says that gift and that calling is irrevocable. He's not going to take him back. Jesus said that when I send the Holy Spirit, he will abide with you forever. Mm. He's not taking him back. And that's your security. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says that. He's your guarantee of what's to come, right? Mm. It, says that in, uh, uh, it says that in Ephesians chapter 1. He says the Holy Spirit is your security. He's your, he's your, your guarantee of what's going to come, what you're going to get. Right? He says he seals you until the yeah. day of redemption. Locked in. Whoa. Mm. This is good. Okay, so uh, look at Romans 8.28. We're I still on works. Go ahead, Dylan. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. You see that? And, and you're the called. Amen. Uh, later on in Romans, he says who are the called is the ones who he justified. Mm -hmm. Those he called, he justified. So who are the called? The justified. justified. If you believe that he justifies the ungodly, he'll take your faith and give you righteousness. So when he talks about being called, people exclude themselves. Because, How do I know I'm called? Well, are you justified? Do you believe on Jesus Christ? Did you receive him? Because yeah. you're the called. You can't even come to him if he first draw you to him. So he must have called you at some point. Mm -hmm. So you're the called, right? And, and you're, you're the justified. You, when you, when you, it's like when, if you call me up on the phone, I can either let it ring, you know, let the answering system pick it up. Well, I can answer the call. Mm -hmm. So I'm never really called until I pick it up. I receive the call, mm -hmm. right? He, she can call me, but I'm not really called until I pick it up. So there's a difference between a calling and being called, actually responding to the call. We respond to the call. Mm. When God says, I want you, Carlos, I want you in my house, I want to adopt you, I want to take you under my wing and transform your life, I want to do that for you, and you took the call. You responded to it. You said, yeah, I want that. Yeah, I want you in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of doing it my own will. I'm, I, I'm tired of my own will. I want your will, God. Okay, not my will, your will be done. And, and you receive him. It's by faith. Amen. Right? It's not an actual physical occurrence. It's spiritual. Isn't that great? Yeah. And, and that transforms you from the inside out. He works, he goes to work in you to will and to do what pleases him. Mm. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you see that's okay, so that's works. Right? Ephesians says we don't work for it. It was saved by grace through faith, not of works that no man can boast. Philippians 2.13 said that it, he works in you to will and to do what pleases him, right? Uh, Philippians 1.6 says once he starts that work, he sees it through, he sees it to completion. Romans 8.28 promises that he will work all things out for good. Why? Because you love him. I called you and you responded. You're in my, my boat. And that's why you're going to see, I'm going to see you through this flood because you got on board with me. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's why the flood of God's wrath is not going to touch you because you're in the boat with me. And I'm a good shepherd who takes charge over my sheep. Who? He says you're bought for a price. You're not even your own. He takes responsibility for you. That's why he says he's going to see this completion. He takes charge over you. Where is that he says he will give his angels charge over you? That's Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Whoa. But uh, when Psalm Jesus... Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Verse 10 or 11. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. When Jesus was in the boat with the 12 disciples in the midst of the storm, none of the disciples drowned. Right. Like he kept all of them. Yeah. Safe. yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Jesus was in the boat. Yeah. And Only Jesus is in your boat. Yeah. And even Peter, when he got out of the boat to walk on water, he was still safe. Even he was still rest. safe. Yeah. Out on the water, walking the water. on the water, he was yeah. still safe. He was the only one who was he, willing to get out of the boat. He looked around <laughs> but he's still <laughs> safe. They were all safe. Yeah. 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 None of them, none of them died. Instead yeah. of being with Christ, he saw all the waves yeah. and all yeah. the things. Oh, oh, and then he started yeah. to sink. But he's still yeah. in Christ, even so in the water. God, when God put his hand out and said, come on, Peter, yeah. he pulled him out of the water and they walked back. See, he, was, he was always safe as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, right? He was always safe. Isn't that the oh, message? The Lord. Isn't that the message? Doesn't it say yeah. to fix your eyes on Jesus? Yeah, You're always you safe in His hands. If you keep your eyes on Him and trust what He did for you, how much He loves you, not my love for Him. What did, James, what did John say? John said, I'm the disciple whom Jesus loved. He was always bragging on the blood, the love of Jesus had for him. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't, oh, I love Jesus. Oh, yeah. I'm the disciple who loves Jesus. No, it was I'm the disciple whom Jesus loves. Right. He always put, he shifted the focus. Yeah. He right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, John, he even said, though he was a prisoner. Yeah. 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 Right? He, he was able to get this amazing revelation yeah. on the island of, Patm on, on the island of Patmos. One, the right? One. He was able to get this yeah. amazing revelation because he was so locked into the love of God. Yeah. He, right? He Maybe said, we'll get some pretty heavy yeah. revelations if we just lock into the love of God. There's a movie called The Road. I, mean, I, <laughs> I do. Yeah. Called The Road. Yeah. Called the road. <laughs> 
Yeah, oh yeah, I saw that a long time ago. They had a lot of, they, back in the days of the 50s and the 60s, yeah. they came out with a lot of movies for yes. Easter about Christ. Yeah. Yes. We wouldn't see that today. If, we, if no. today had its way, we wouldn't see nothing yeah. like that. Well, you know, that's a good point, because today is, it's Easter, man. And, and, you know, it's important to understand, I mean, if anything, I mean, because we're, what, okay, what are we representing, don't say anything. I mean, don't you say anything. <laughs> the answer, men. What are we celebrating on Easter? Resurrection. Absolutely. And what do we celebrate Friday? Crucifixion. Huh? His crucifixion. Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, what are we, we it's Good Friday is the day he, he died. Yeah. No, he's not, that's not the day he died, but go ahead. Huh? That's not the day he died. Well, he died three days. Friday, Saturday, and he raised on Sunday. No, no, no. Friday he died. So it would be Saturday, one, and that would be Sunday. Two. No, he died on Thursday. I, I think he died on Friday. I think we're celebrating Good Friday Thursday. because that's the day that he, he no, went to the cross. No, it was a high Sabbath. He died on Thursday. Believe me, I did the study a long time ago and proved the point that he died on a Thursday, or Wednesday, Thursday. Well, then why are we celebrating Good Friday? Because the Catholic Church set it up that it was Good Friday. That's why. <laughs> as simple as that. I don't know about but it all was that. in the earth three days. It's good. I don't know about that. And if you follow that three days <laughs> back from Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday, three days of the earth. That's what I think there's more to it than that. I think it has something to do with the Passover. I think it has something to do with the day of the Passover and all that stuff. It was like Sabbath. And because of the high Sabbath, that's what made the difference. And that's why they broke the leg. So if you know, if you really know the, the, the full out of the scripture and everything, he didn't die on Friday, but. I don't know. That might. That could be, I'm sure that can be debated. I don't know. I don't know the full extent of it, but I do know what we're doing on Friday. We're celebrating his death, and like you yes. said, and, and what we're is what we are, what are we celebrating, right? And, and Easter is that he was resurrected. That he, that he rose from the dead, and and that's a big deal for us because, like I said in Second Corinthians, uh, in Second Corinthians, First Corinthians, chapter fifteen, it says if he is not risen from the dead, I mean this should be the scripture. I mean if I, if I was going to preach a sermon on Easter. It would be, the, if, if there was one verse I was going to use, it would be this one, okay? Because it talks about the resurrection. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Because this kicks that idea that willful sin mm-hmm. is any sin, that any sin that you commit willfully is going to put me under judgment, okay? Because of some willful sin in my life. As apart from it, that willful sin being rejection of Jesus Christ, unbelief, right? Yes. It, this is what kicks that idea that it's some willful sin in my life because if I continue to overeat uh, continuously, if I continue in my temperament, I can't really get a hold on my temper, and I continue to get angry when the Bible says even if you're angry, you're danger of judgment. Okay, so if it's that, well, then I could see why I would have to, why I would be judged because he says even angry, you're in danger of judgment. But that was before the cross. After the cross, he died for all your sins, right? Yes. So this willful sin is not any old sin. But this one kicks that to the curb. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 15. Uh-huh. This, see, this is the crowning. If I was going to teach a sermon on Easter, this would be the crowning verse. Mm. Are you feeling me? Yeah. Because yeah. this says a mouthful. Are you ready? Yep. Mm-hmm. And if Christ is not risen, hello, Easter, Easter, yes. right? If he is not risen, but we're celebrating that he did. Yes. That's what we're celebrating on Easter. Yes. Easter is a celebration that he did rise from the dead. But this is if he didn't, your faith is worthless, mm-hmm. okay, useless, mm-hmm. okay, and you are still in your sins. In your sins. Mm. But he did. So are you, Betsy, are you in your sins? You, what? No. <laughs> well, she said yes. Sinner, so, so she is. Is. Right, you're a, you're a saint. You are a saint <laughs> who is not in your sins, <laughs> who sometimes, unfortunately, sins. But you're growing. Yes. So let's focus on the growth. You're not in your sins, according to this. God does not see you in your sins. 
He doesn't. Before the Lord. Read it. Before God, we are. Read it. You think God is focused on your sin. He's focusing on your faith. It's faith that pleases God. He says, without faith, you cannot please him. He's focused on your faith. What are you trusting for salvation? That's what he's focused on. You see your sin. He sees your faith. Now, if you start focusing on your sin, it can steal your faith. Don't do that. Because he says you're not in your sins. Why would you want to go there? You do it, but hey, dude, that's so not me. What am I doing? Let me get back, you know, my thinking, right thinking. Fix my thoughts on Jesus. That's what he says. You don't see fix your thoughts on, he never says to fix your thoughts on sin. Actually, Hebrews chapter 10 says we shouldn't even have a sin consciousness. So we should never be fixing our thoughts on sin. Well, we do. We sin, and because it's so offensive, we feel it's so offensive to God, it, it shames us if you feel horrible. You know, you feel bad. The Bible never says you shouldn't feel bad about sin. If you, you didn't feel bad about sin, you'd be... You'd be a lunatic. Killer. You'd be like a... Ser- like a serial killer. Yeah, you'd be something wrong with you if it didn't bother you, if it didn't pain you, you know, if, there wasn't some, if it wasn't really a struggle. Yeah. But it is, mm-hmm. right? It is a struggle, and that's what makes you Christian, is we struggle with sin. <laughs> that, that's what makes you a Christian. It's just we hate it. It's a struggle. We don't like it. We wish we, we would just not be there. That's the that's a beautiful thing that you're struggling with sin. You think so something wrong with you because you're still sinning? No, it's a, it's a struggle. I do, I'm growing, and it's not good. But but God is not viewing you there, in the sin place. He's viewing you in Christ, Amen. and there's no he sin in Christ. He says that he says that he was manifest to take our sins away, and in Him there's no sin. So he, right? That's what it says, right? First John chapter 3, verse 5 says, In him there's no sin. Dude, are you in Christ? Well, there's no sin. Yeah. Mm. Henry, can you explain verse 19 and 20 to us? Huh? Verse 19 20. That's how you stay righteous before God. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you'd be unrighteous every time you sin. That doesn't make sense. Why is he imputing his righteousness? The Bible says he is imputing his righteousness unto those who believe. He says, if you believe that he justifies the ungodly, he'll take your faith and give you righteousness. Why bother giving you my... If I'm God and I'm giving you my righteousness, Regina, I'm going to impute my righteousness to you for your faith. You, you stop working for it. That's what it says. We could go read Romans chapter 4 and 5. It says, if you stop working for it and you just believe that he's justifying the ungodly, I will take your faith and I'll give you righteousness. Now, if you're unrighteous every time you sin, because you're still going to sin, right. and if you're unrighteous every time you sin, why bother giving you my righteousness? What's the point? Right. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Why am I giving you my righteousness, perfect, imperishable, incorruptible righteousness of God? Why would I give you that, okay, if, it's, if you're just going to be unrighteous every time you sin? The point is that it's incorruptible. That's what I'm giving you. Yeah. That's the point. Isn't that good? And I'm going to show you in a second. I'm going to show you that's true. I'm going to show you that's true. By, uh, the best way is to let the Bible interpret itself. Go ahead, D- Carlos. Not Carlos. No, oh, Betsy. I was wondering, because you asked me earlier, you know, why, you know, you're saying or not, because I know that we, we all have to be in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So why would you want to give me righteousness for my sin? Why would you want to give me righteousness for my sin? Why would you want to give me righteousness for my sin? No, it's not what we have before. Continually, continually. his blood washes our sin. You are a sinner by nature because you were born of Adam. Right? right. right? Well, the seed of Adam. Where was I going to go? There was something I was going to say a minute ago. I forgot what it was. I don't, oh, yeah. um, First Peter. Don't remind me. Okay. Okay, I want to show you that what we have is incorruptible. Right. Okay, that's important. I want to show, I want to confirm with scripture that what we have is incorruptible. You don't get unrighteous every time you sin. It is incorruptible. It doesn't fade away. I'm going to show you in a minute. Okay. Or Yeah. So here's the thing. You are a sinner by birth. The Bible says, uh, those which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. That's what Jesus said in, in John chapter 3. So right? So we're all born of the flesh. We're all born sinners. Okay? But when you're born of the spirit, the Holy Spirit moves in, and the Holy Spirit is not a sinner. The Bible says you become one with him in the spirit. So you're not a sinner anymore. The Bible refers to Christians as saints. So you are a saint who sometimes sins. You're not a sinner who's trying to become a saint. Now you sometimes sin. You think you're a sinner because you sin. I'm not because I'm righteous. God gave me his righteousness. I'm not a sinner every time I sin. I still sin, but I don't want to identify with that. 
You don't want to identify with the sin. That's not you. So that way, when you do it, you say, but that is so not me. What am I doing? That is not me. I'm not a sinner. I'm a saint. I'm created righteous and truly holy. I'm a child of God. I am born again righteous. That is not me. I don't roll like that. That's sin. But the Bible says count yourself dead to sin. So don't identify with your sin. You're not a sinner. You're a saint. This is good news. That's another gift we don't deserve. It's heavy, huh? It's a dose of God's grace. Just understand with that that's what grace is. It's a hard pill to swallow, but that's why you got to understand what grace is. Okay, that's what grace is. It's God, it's you, Jesus becoming sin for you. See, I'm not a sinner. He became sin for us that we might become, might become the righteous of God in Christ. There's a might because you got to receive this. You got to believe and receive or doubt and go without. <laughs> Don't doubt this. It's the truth. And I'm going to show it. Right, let me prove it. This is great. We walked through this so much. Verse 20. Explain that. Huh? 1520. 1520? Yes. But now Christ is risen. There it is. He said if he is not risen, we would still be in our sins. But he is risen. And he has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. What that means is there are some people who have fallen asleep. They've died. Huh? Those that have died. And just talking about people, people, have have died, died. people that have he's died. the first one that died and then rose again. Yeah, first fruits of those That's who have died. He's, for first he's the first fruits. Okay, meaning that when Jesus died, okay, his death provided a way for us to be saved. Okay, mm -hmm. so he was kind of like the first fruits. You know what I mean? Like the, right. se the seed yeah. for us to be saved. Right? Mm -hmm. So we're mm -hmm. saved through his death. But right? And he's saying there that he has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Right? He died. What, what it means is the first fruits is talking about his resurrection being the first fruits. See, because that's what Paul's talking about. Okay. That if we did not, if he did not raise again. This is why, this is why you got to read context. Right. See the next verse. Okay. Yeah. For see, because he explains. Because that's a little bit wordy. What do you mean falling asleep? Right? Yeah. He says, for since by one man. That's not capitalized. Man. Man. By one man, that's not capitalized, so that's just a man. Yeah. Uh, just, that's Adam. a normal man. That's he says, Adam, by one Adam. man, he's talking about Adam, yeah. came death. Right? Yeah. Remember when Adam ate from the tree of, yeah. of, of good and evil? Yeah. What happened? He was restricted from the tree of eternal life. He couldn't live forever anymore. God guarded that tree with angels and said, you cannot eat from that tree of eternal life and live forever in sin. You sin now. You no longer can eat from that tree. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. through Adam came death. It could be talking about spiritual death. Yeah. Because he died spiritually. Right? Right. His body began to right? Die right at that point. Because he, he, died, he died that moment spiritually without even being restricted from the tree of eternal life. Right? But the tree of eternal life was restricted so he couldn't live physically forever. Right? Okay. But since one man came death, but by one man, now that's capitalized. Who's that? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Right? Also came the resurrection of the dead. That means we have new life in Christ. That means we're not going to stay in the grave. Okay, we're going to live new life, eternal life with God. Okay. And he's the first one to rise again, and then we will all, because of him, rise again. Jesus is the tree of life. Verse 22 goes on. It says, for as Adam all die. Okay, for as in Adam all die. Even so, in the same way, in Christ, all will be made alive. Okay, so in Christ, when he says all, it doesn't mean everybody, you know, this is automatic. You just, you know, everybody who did, you don't have to trust in Jesus. He do, he does, it's not saying that anybody, without, even without believing on Jesus Christ, we all are made alive. No, he's saying all, so in Christ, in Christ, all will be made alive. See, yeah. so you got to be in Christ. You're either in sin or you're in Christ. Who's made alive through Christ? The ones who are in Christ. Right? So when he says all, he's not saying, oh, it's just automatic. Everybody's going to be made alive. No, he says in Christ. Otherwise, you're, it's universalism. Yeah. See? Yeah. <laughs> That's heavy. You see 23? One more verse. 23. We've got to get going. We've got to keep going. I, I don't want to go through. First Peter. Okay, let's go to First Peter. Because I want to prove to you what I'm telling you. See, because I, 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 we record these. We have these videotaped. But I want to get, I want to be, I like to confirm everything I'm saying with the word. Because I'm telling you that you're not unrighteous every time you sin. That's a heavy statement. Because people think we are. 
Uh, most people would preach that you are. I, I, people would fight me on this, you know, and say, oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're right to Well, why is he giving you his righteousness? What's the point? You know, if, if it's up to you, that's you. Is, if you think you're unrighteous every time you sin and there's something that you have to do to get re-righteous, that's what the Bible says is establishing our own righteousness. And he says, God, Jesus ended that. We no longer establish our own. So you're either receiving a righteousness by faith, by his grace, or you are trying to establish your own. We stop establishing your own and he trusts in the gift of righteousness that is because of Jesus. His obedience makes us righteous. It's his obedience, not yours. Let's trust in that. Is that 1 Peter? Yeah. First Ooh. Yeah. This is heavy stuff, huh? It Chapter is. Two. 3 and 4 and 5. Chapter 1. This says a mouthful. This tells you that we are not unrighteous every time we sin. Okay? It does. It really does. Mm -hmm. What was that, 1 Peter 1? 1 Peter 3, 4, and 5. Okay. Chapter, one, first. chapter 1. Chapter 1. Chapter right. 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus. Come on, let's just bless the let's, let's just bless God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ right now. Let's just bless him. That's what he's doing right now. He's saying, Blessed be the Lord and God, Father of it says, blessed, blessed be God and Father. You know he is God to the sinner, but he is Father to his children. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay? And here he says, God and Father. He is both. But he's God to the sinner. He is father to his kids. Yeah. Who? Blessed be that God and father. Yeah. To me, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And because I'm in Christ, guess what? He's my dad too. Right? He says the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, didn't the Bible say that we are one with him in the spirit? Yeah. That as he is, so am I in this world. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it say that? Yeah. Well, he's my dad too. The Bible says we cry out, Abba, Father, because we are now in Christ. He's my daddy too. Right? Who, according to his abundant mercy, what is mercy? Withholding punishment. Abundant mercy. That means you, a plenty of no punishment. A load for, a, 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 a truckload of mercy. That's what he means. Abundant mercy. A truckload of mercy. That means no more punishment for your sin. Okay? Has begotten us again. You know what that We're means? Born again. We've been born again. He's talking about believers who have been born again. Right? You see that? To a living hope. I have a living hope. Oh. By the resurrection of Jesus. What did he say? If he is not risen from the dead, we'd still be in our sins. Oh, right? Yeah. right? Yeah, that's right? Good. That's good. Uh, are you yeah. feeling that's me? That's a good cross-reference. I'm, 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 I'm putting that... I'm putting... <laughs> I'm putting that scripture where he says, if he is not risen from the dead, your faith is futile and we would still be in our sins. Now he's talking about the resurrection here. This, remember this is Easter. We're talking about resurrection. This is, these are good verses for Easter. Yeah. I'm glad I'm going here. I go with the Holy Spirit flow. I was going to go somewhere else, but I'm, I'm going here because I guess it's Easter. The Holy Spirit wants me to talk about this. Okay? So this is great. This is good stuff. These are, the great, these are foundational scriptures for an Easter sermon. Right? Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians uh, 15, uh, tw I forget what it was. but 3 and it was 4. 15 what? 3 and 4 is talks about... Well, no, 1 Corinthians 15. 17. 17. 17. Thank you. Woo, you guys are good. You're better than me, man. <laughs> that one where it says that if it's not risen from the dead, we would still be in our sins. Yeah. Right? Right. And, 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 and our faith would be useless. But then it goes on to say, you pointed out that it says, but he did rise from the dead. Yeah. Right? So we're not in our sins, believer. No. Right? You're not unrighteous. He became sin for you so you could become the righteousness of God in him. Mm -hmm. So you're in him. You're not sinner. So look. Uh, by the resurrection, uh, the end of verse 3, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, that's how we're begotten again. That's what he's saying. He's saying yeah. we were born again because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and my faith in it. It's all about faith. Right? So when he's talking about it, it's not automatic. Yeah. Right? It doesn't, everybody does, Everybody doesn't get this. It comes by faith. So let's believe it. If it comes by faith, we better trust this. Yeah, it says, if you confess Jesus Christ as Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Oh, easy, Dylan. Man, shh. Boy. Okay, by the resurrection, okay. Two, here it goes. Okay, here it goes. Right? You need to see this, because I'm saying that you're not unrighteous every time you sin. Wait, what are you saying, Henry? Most people would try and correct me on that. I'm saying, <laughs> wait up. Let me show you. You ready? Because if you're born again through the resurrection of Jesus, resurrection of Jesus, right? Because the abundant mercy, it says, look at what he says. Go back to verse 3. 
abundant mercy, born again through the resurrection. Right? Are you feeling me? Yes. That's what it says. His abundant mercy, that means him choosing to withhold your punishment. How? Through Je Jesus' death and resurrection, you are born again. Okay? And your faith in it. It always takes faith. Yeah. Right? we got to believe this. Most people say they're Christian and they believe in God and they trust in Jesus. But they don't have a clue what this is because he tells you what this is. Two, verse four. Two, an inheritance that makes you, that, that you become unrighteous every time you sin. Does it say that? No. no. Opposite. It says the opposite. It says to an inheritance that is incorruptible. That means you don't unrighteous every time you sin. What you're having through this born-again experience from Jesus' resurrection, okay, right? God's abundant mercy poured out through him. You are getting an incorruptible spirit. Look. Incorruptible. Undefiled. That means it doesn't get unrighteous. What is defilement? It gets dirty. To be defiled means it got dirty. He said it's undefiled. Yeah. Incorruptible. That means what is corruptible? It means it goes bad. Means right? it can rust well, or moth eaten. Or what do they what do they do to what they do to a can uh, when when they take a can of vegetables or some food and they, they put it what, they, they put it into a can airtight they put some sort of, sort of preservatives preservatives some salt yeah. or something in there to preserve it and then they can it they take all the air out and, and that food is good for like five ten years in that yeah. can like jam it preserves it yeah. it's incorruptible right yeah. okay but that's because it was sealed in, in certain preservatives. That's what you're getting. The Bible says you're sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. That's the seal. You're locked in incorruptible Betsy. <laughs> incorruptible, undefiled. It doesn't fade away. You know what that means? It, it, you turn on a light in, in a room and what happens to darkness? It fades away. It's gone. Darkness is gone. That means the light stays on. It doesn't fade. What you have doesn't fade away. The light is going to stay on. You're in Christ and he's the light of the world. It doesn't fade away. Who? Are you like how I expound on this? Yeah, it's good. In reserve. <laughs> reserve. And, and here's, here's the clincher. Do, like he said, he who began this good work, he will see it to completion. That's your reservation. He says reserved in heaven for you. The reservation. What, he, what Jesus said, you believe on him, you won't come under judgment. You've already passed from death and life. You're already in the door. It's a reservation. You can count on it. Like I say, Dylan and I make reservations to go to the movies. We do it ahead of time online, right? So that we can count on that seat being there. That seat right. is going to be there because we reserved it. That's what he's talking about. We don't have to worry about... You, you know. have a reservation in heaven, man. <laughs> yes. Jesus took... Huh? We don't have to worry about getting that seat. We can be there five minutes before the movie. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, right. That seat is reserved for you. <laughs> right. That's what he's talking about. <laughs> and this is Peter. This isn't even Paul. Hmm. This isn't even Paul, who's the masterpiece of, of, of grace. He's the, preacher, he's the minister of grace to the max, right? Yeah. And, and here's Peter saying this, saying, taking us to a whole other level. Dude, this is what Paul is saying, guys. You're incorruptible. When Paul says that he's given you his righteousness, he's talking about you're not unrighteous every time you sin. You're incorruptible. Peter is confirming what Paul is saying. It goes on in verse 5. Verse it says, five. you are kept <laughs> by the power of God. Look at verse 5. Look at verse 5. And here it goes. Yeah, this is great. My God. Talk about an Easter sermon. This would be a good one. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. <laughs> kept in. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Who are kept by your ability to sustain your relationship. <laughs> no. Right. No. He says, who are kept by the power of God. And he's omnipotent. Through your faith for salvation. Dude, let's put our faith in this. Yeah. Huh? God's omnipotent. That's his power. Yeah, ready to be revealed in that last time. And then he says in verse 6, in this you greatly rejoice. See, you know what that means to me? We should be enjoying God. Yeah. He says, in this we really, yeah. this we greatly rejoice. We should really, when he says greatly rejoice, it means we should we really should, be enjoying God. We should say wow and thank you. Oh, wow, yeah. thank you, what a good God. The power, man, rejoice in the power of the blood. It is not a common thing. It is not a common thing. We are not trampling the blood, trampling Jesus underfoot. We are not worried about no other sacrifice because we're standing in the one that works. Wow. <sighs> yeah. He's 
easy. Don't hurt him, Henry. This is good. This is really good. This is a this is an Easter sermon, man. To do this is the resurrection scriptures. We were there two twenty one twenty Okay, let's go to okay. Since we're right here, let's go to. Are you with me? Let's go to let's go to um, let's go to okay. Let's go to Hebrews uh, Hebrews six one. Isn't it good? Mm -hmm. What did I say, 6 1? Yeah, 6 1. Okay. Therefore, leaving discussions of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on. He's talking about let's mature, let's grow up, let's grow in, let's move forward. Okay? Let's go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Okay, right. He's saying, let's leave this idea of dead works behind. That's not. We don't roll there. Okay, that's not us, right? And we understand that we got to just have faith toward God. Okay, forget the dead works, and we understand we're supposed to have faith in God. Mm -hmm. Okay, and not in our works. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get past that. Right. Right. right? Let's get. Let's grow some. Right. So he's talking about dead works there. Okay. Um, Go. Go here. Go to Philippians three nine. Back to Philippians. So what are dead works? We're going to look at that for a second. Right? You want to know what dead works are? Let's take a look. You probably already got a good idea. I've been talking about it for the past uh, hour. Okay? We don't earn it. We don't work for it. We work it out. We work out what we're, we're tr- what our salvation. If we work out our own salvation, I must already be saved, right? Yeah. Right? I'm working Sanctu- it out. It's a sanctification. Yeah. 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 Right, so what did I say? Philippians 3 9. 3 9. 3 9. Everybody there? Yeah. Except me. Everybody but me. Okay, 3 9. Okay. Now, Paul has just talk, got done talking about his credentials. He got, I don't want to go through it all, but he talks about a long list of his credentials. He talks about how he's, he says all this is, 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 dumb. is dumb. Watch Verse this. Nowhere. Verse 8. Yeah. But indeed, I also count. Verse 8. 3 8. Philippians 3 8. But indeed, I count all things lost for the excellency of just knowing Jesus Christ, yeah. my Lord, for whom I have suffered loss of all things. He says, I give up everything for him. Yeah. Right? And count them rubbish. Everything else is poop. Uh, or trans- or some translations say dumb, yeah. Yeah, dumb, which means doo-doo. Yeah. All yeah. that's caca compared to just knowing Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> can I use it? Can I say, it's in the Bible. Paul, you, Paul said it. Your dead, your dead works are doo doo. King doo-doo. James says dung, right? It says dung. That's what he's saying. It's poop, right? It's in the Bible. Come on. But he's saying all my credentials, all the things I've done to earn relationship, to to deserve something. He says all that deserve, earn, work hard to get is poop. Poop poop. Right. Yeah. And it's all rubbish that I, mine says rubbish, the new King James. Yeah. I guess they didn't like the word dung. dung. It's all right. All right. Yeah. That I might gain Christ and be found in him. Remember, if you're in him, there's no sin. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. If you're in sin, you're not in him. Right? right, right. right? Yeah. And being found in him, that means you're not lost. What, what did he say? I was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. Mm. Oh, that's good. He yeah. said, I was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. But I'm not lost. I'm not lost. He says, you're being found in him. Mm. Paul right? Isn't that heavy? Paul. <laughs> you're, talking about, Paul said the last week. you're talking about Jesus. Jesus said that. Yeah, yeah. Jesus yeah. said that. I, I didn't know if you were talking about Paul, but Jesus said that. Oh, That's why I just said It's okay. It's okay. Because you said I was sent to Well, no, most people know yeah, where, Paul, where Jesus, Jesus said that. Jesus said that. Oh. Right? You know that it was Jesus who said that I was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. Are you familiar with that? Jesus said I was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. And my point was that they were lost. Yeah, right. Okay, and, and if they were lost, the, the, the Gentiles were definitely lost because they yes. didn't even know God. Yes. Right. So everybody was lost. Right, right. But here he's saying being found in him. Yeah. See, if you're in him, you're not lost. Right. Right? If you're in Christ, isn't that a whole point? Yeah. Because he's inviting you into Christ? Yeah, because it's, the Bible says that we're all like sheep. We, like, all we like sheep have gone astray. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, and be found, and now... We have the good shepherd. 
And if we tend to get lost a little bit, he promises to go search for his lost sheep until he finds it. Mm -hmm. So we're not lost. We're secure in the fold with him. And even if we wander away, he promises to go and search for that lost sheep until he finds it. Right? Bring him back to the fold because that's his responsibility. He takes his responsibility for his sheep seriously. Just like David did. Okay. Yeah. Right? David took uh, protected his sheep. And, 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 and just like if a sheep gets wanders off, if a sheep gets wanders off, the danger is that a wolf might eat him. Right. Or a bear. Okay. But you know what the Bible says about us being sheep? And that wolf could be symbolic of the devil. And you know what the Bible says? The devil cannot touch us. Mm. The devil cannot touch us. It says that in 1 John chapter 5, right? right? right the right, devil right. cannot touch us Amen because that. we've been born again. Right? Yeah. So we don't have to fear that even being with a wolf. And we sure don't have to fear being told, cause lost for good because we're found in Christ and he keeps mm. his sheep. That's good. Isn't it good? That's good exposition. Isn't it good? That's really good stuff. <laughs> that's heavy, huh? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. God gave me a gift to be able to expound on these scriptures, help you see some stuff. But if you want me to do that, I got to see it. How can I help you see something if I don't see it myself? Right. But see, it's so clear to me, and that's why I can make it clear to you. Right? And be found in him. Here it is. This is dead works. This is the opposite of dead works. Okay? And be not having my own righteousness, which is from the law. Okay? But that which is through faith in Christ. Yeah. Okay? So the righteousness I have comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Right? Mm -hmm. This is not a righteousness of my own. It's something I'm getting through faith in Jesus Christ. So if your righteousness comes through faith in Jesus Christ, here's a thought. The Bible says his obedience makes you righteous. We can go there in Romans chapter 8. It says that yeah. because of one man's sin, we're all sinners. Because of one man and his uh, obedience, obedience. Yes. we're made righteous. Yes. Now here's a thought. This is heavy, okay? Like they say at the, on the, on the, at the pulpit sometimes, they say, I'm going to get all kinds of emails about this. When they say something yeah. that's yeah, pretty heavy, yeah, yeah. they say, I'm going to get all kinds of emails about this. Well, if anybody watching this, I might get an email or two. You know what I yeah, mean? Because right. this is heavy. We're going to tell you right now. That if it's his obedience that makes you righteous, not mine, then it's going to be, have to be his disobedience that makes me unrighteous, not mine. Oh, wow. Right? Because it wasn't my obedience that made me righteous. I'm going to, we'll go to that one next and I'll show you. Because if it's his obedience that makes you righteous, then it would have to be his disobedience that makes me unrighteous. Right. Okay? Right. And that makes sense? It does to me. And especially when I'm looking at scriptures that say that we're incorruptible, right? Then that makes perfect sense. Right, we're incorruptible. Right. It, it, it's not undefiled. It stays undefiled and it, it, it doesn't fade away and it's reserved in heaven for right. you. Mm -hmm. And God is going to see this through. He's going to keep you. All those scriptures tell me, dude, it must be real. Mm -hmm. My righteousness must be a real righteousness that God gives me of his own. It's his own. Okay, so he says, and being found in him, verse 9. Philippians 3, 9, not having a righteousness of my own, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Jesus, the righteousness which is from God by faith. It is a faith righteousness. Wow. It is not a works righteousness. It's of God. It is of God. It is a perfect, incorruptible righteousness. Is God incorruptible? Can God be corrupt? No, the Bible says Jesus could be tempted by, by, in all ways. He says he was tempted in all ways, but without sin. Right. See, so even Jesus as a man was incorruptible, right? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit. He is the Holy Spirit. Do you think he, being the Holy Spirit, do you think he's corruptible? No. Well, you're one with him in the Spirit. Wow. You're joined with him in the Spirit, and therefore you too are incorruptible. Who? Yeah. This is good news. That's great, yeah. Jesus said that he, the whole Godhead is, dwells in him. So, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And, lives in the and I can show you a scripture that says it is by these precious men. He's, this is a promise. Yeah. He, he, says that if, he, he said, if you confess Christ as Lord and believe in your heart that he rose from the dead, you'll be saved. That's a promise. Okay. Okay? He says that if he is not risen from the dead, we would still be in our sins. But he did rise from the dead. And I believe he did. Amen. Amen. Therefore, it's a promise. You're not in your sins. These are promises. And the Bible says it is by these precious promises that we partake in his divine nature. So apparently his divine nature is going to manifest in my life out into my actions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If I trust in the promises. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Like Paul said, I'm not ashamed of this gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. There is power in the message. There is power in you believing these promises. Yeah. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Woo! Isn't that good? Yeah. yeah. We got to close, huh? Let's go to one more. Titus. Titus. Is it Titus 3, 5, and 6? This is the last letter of Paul. His friend. These last letters, right before Hebrews, were his friends. Right before Hebrews. Mm. Hebrews is an anonymous writer. So Philemon is the last of Paul's letters. Okay. Hebrews is anonymous. We don't know who wrote it. Most people think it was probably Paul. I did. Huh? Nah, huh? Hebrews is not Paul? No, it's a, they put it right after Paul's letters because most people think it is. <coughs> so they put it where it belongs. At some point, we find some ancient documents that say that it was Paul who wrote it or it's something, in the right place. then it's in the right place because it could have been Paul. So they put Hebrews right after Paul's letters right. as a transition into the other letters, like from Peter, James, yeah. you know, the other letters. Like, like all of a sudden you have James after Hebrews, right? Jude. And then Peter, right? And, right? Jude. Yeah. Yeah, Jude. Yeah. So, um, so fi- what did I say, Philemon? No, you said Titus. Titus. Oh, Titus. Well, easy. Okay. What chapter? Verse uh, chapter Titus chapter three. Mm. Okay, okay. Let's go back to three. For we ourselves were also once. Now, see, this is important to understand your new identity. You're a new creature in Christ. You're a new creature in Christ. So you were once this way. Don't identify with this. This is not. If you do, if you should be foolish or disobedient, right, or any of these things that you see here, say that that is so not me anymore, okay? I might have fell into that, I might have been tempted to do that, I might have went there for a minute, but that's not me, because he says this used to be you, right? Mm -hmm. For This is important, this is new identity, this is what it means to be in Christ, you're a new creature, born again, right? Mm -hmm. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, Deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness of the Lord our God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by righteous works which we have done, not because of any goodness on our part, but according to his mercy, he saved us. And what is mercy? No punishment. He chose not to punish you. And he chose Jesus to make, he sent Jesus to make that possible. This is his choice to send Jesus to suffer in your place. Mm-hmm. He can, hold, he can to- totally give you complete mercy, no punishment ever across the board because Jesus suffered in your place. Right? But according to his mercy, he saved us by the wash, here it goes, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. That's how it happens. Through the blood. Holy Spirit stuff. Yeah, and the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy yeah. Spirit. This is a spiritual thing. Yeah. That's why you don't feel it. That's why you still think you're a sinner every time you sin. No, because it's a spiritual thing taking place inside of you. God is doing this in and through you. Right? Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a regeneration, a washing of regeneration. What is regeneration, Dylan? Regeneration means to, is like being born again. It's like uh, regenerated means uh, recreated. Change. Change. Regener- right? Genesis. Re- like regenesis. Yes. Like a new creation. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. See, regeneration, new creation. It starts a right? new genesis. Yeah. By the washing of regeneration right. of the renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly. Right? We're, we're, the Hyper. Bible says we Hyper. reign in life by the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Hyper grace. Abundantly. Right? Through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. There it is. We're justified by grace. We need to trust in grace. Oh, tone down the grace, man. No, he says that justifies us. That's what we're putting our hope in. He says that's the hope. That's my hope of eternal life is the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's good. Wow. You're not good. I didn't even go where I I planned to go, but I'll save this for next week. We'll go there and say, I wanted to go with uh, the Romans chapter 8. Come next week. Try and be on time next week because I want to go through Romans chapter 8, Romans Romans chapter 6, where he says, Shall we just go on sinning? Because more sin, more grace, right? Because people think that that's what the grace message does. It teaches you to go on sinning without any, without any restrictions, right? But grace is taking all the rule, rules and, you know, living from the heart. 
He gives you a new heart. He puts his laws in your heart and in your mind, and he works in you to will and to do what pleases him. It's a whole new program. It's not law-based message. But the thing is, I want to walk through Romans chapter 6, because he says in there, he never threatens judgment as a reason why we don't sin. And he, he takes, says we're not under law, we're under grace. So he's not putting you under law as a way to keep from sinning, right? Okay. But what he does say is two reasons he gives for not sinning. One is that you're a new creature. Yeah. You don't like sin like you used to. Right. People who say that you're saying that we can just go on sin, you know what I hear? The flesh. Yeah. That's somebody speaking from the flesh thinks that sin is just so enjoyable. How are we going to stop? It's so much fun. You know, sin isn't fun to a true believer. We don't enjoy it like we were, did in, when we were in the flesh. We used to say, oh, no problem. But now that we're in the spirit, it's, yeah. it's a problem. It bothers us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, so it's a whole different world. And people that say, oh, you're just saying. Now, it's a valid question for somebody who's, who's hearing this for the first time. Are you saying we can just go on and sin? It's a valid question sure, sure. to ask it. But if I give you the right answer and you stay there, that's not good. That is not a healthy Christian yeah. to, to hear the truth and, and, and then to, to continue to think that I'm giving a license to sin because it's not. It's not. And here's the truth. The truth is he doesn't threaten judgment in Romans chapter 6 when he asked twice about shall we just go on sinning. He never threatens judgment. He tells we're not under the law. But what he does say is that we're new creatures. Mm. We ha we're new people. We're new creatures. We have a new way of thinking. God gave you a new heart. You want to please God. It's a want to. God's doing that for you. He moved in. Your body's a temple of the Holy Spirit. We have a change of heart. Mm. Right? We're putting God first for a change. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, the, that's the first reason. And the second reason he gives that's is because the, you don't want to give the devil a foothold. He's the enemy. God isn't. God's not threatening right. judgment. Right. But the devil wants to put you under condemnation. Mm. Yeah. There's no condemnation for you in Christ. But the right. devil wants to put you under condemnation. Yeah. And he wants you to feel you miserable. And when you sin, you feel miserable. It's, it's hard to feel comfortable with God when you're sinning. Yeah. Right. Okay? Yeah. It, it's hard. Yeah. But God doesn't want you feeling that way. He wants you to come to him with the sin and letting him help right. you get out of it. He wants you, to, we think because we sin, we can't talk to him. He won't answer my prayers. Mm -hmm. He says, no, I'm the solution to your sinning. Get your eyes off the sin and fix your eyes on me. Okay? And change will come. Okay? Keep trusting me and what I did for you. Stop thinking you don't deserve this. That you did something to ruin it. You didn't. It's incorruptible. Right? right? Mm -hmm. So Right? Isn't that good? Yeah. <laughs> it's incorruptible. Yeah. <laughs> this is good on. Huh? Amen. You want to close this door? Father God, thank you for the incorruptible righteousness, Father, that you've given us, Father, that God, that we are begotten again, born again, God, because of your resurrection. We thank you and we celebrate your resurrection today, God, and every day. Father, and we thank you that we have we're we're new creations and we have new life in you. And we praise you and thank you for the power of your resurrection and, and the power of your blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes, thank you.